been spending money again. Hello and welcome to this week's video, which actually must start with an apology to um, the members of Berry St Edmunds Wood Turning Club. Unfortunately, I was due to do a demo there at the start of this week, but um, I've had COVID again. So unfortunately that has been postponed. I really hope I'll get there soon though, because the initial booking was made in February 2019. Right, what am I going to do today? Well, today I'm going to have a go with a piece of wood that I bought some time ago from Styles and Bates, 12 by four inch. I want to call it mascarpone, but it's really macrocarpa. Um, never turned it before. I'm going to see what it's like. <coughs> Either a box or some kind of arty column. Maybe even a vase. Let's get on with it. That's centered. Look at how it's coming in this end. That's doing fine. Now that cuts quite nicely across the end grain. It's got slightly sort of waxy feel to it. Now, part of the reason for doing this project was to try out a new tool. And the new tool I've got is um, another Simon Hope tool, a hollowing tool, an eight millimeter cutter. Now you've seen me use his six millimeter multi hollowing tool, which I have over here very nice tool little six millimeter cutter that really copes well with all sorts of grain on a round bar so you can have it flat or you can angle it over and i don't really need one of these so but when did that stop a wood turner buying a tool so <coughs> the difference is this is a larger cutter, as I said, eight millimeters. So a bit more aggressive. And for that reason, it's on a bar and it's angled. So it's always going to cut at a 45 degree angle. Just give as long, of course, let's go onto the overhead, that you don't rest it on this curved part of the shaft, but that you rest it on, on the flat bar come in at center and a scoop. Uh, you can use it to do the complete hollowing. You could use it to um, have started hollowing and then use it to finish off. I'm learning how to use the tool. I think I'm gonna use it from the start just to see what it's like. So I've just got it trailing just slightly. In on center. Now, little pip in the bottom, let's address that. Let's 
so the rest of that there's a little bruise line there can you see that mm, I think so just want to work on on shaping that a bit better and a little pip in the middle don't have to turn it off with it moving you can scrape across it a bit like using a cabinet scraper maybe a bit cruder blending that in removing any of the high spot there now I just want to clean this edge up I don't want to leave it parallel if I come onto the overhead I don't want to leave it parallel I want it to go go slightly in so a very careful little cut with it angling in last bits of the witness mark just there so it won't fit oh <laughs> it fits very nicely right so i just got to very carefully clean that edge up don't want to sand too much off there And that for now is that bit finished so let's take it out of the chuck put that to one side and get on with the chuck body so I've got my tenon on the end which looks to be far too big Oh no, that's going to be fine. It's a, it's a little on the large size, really. And that, for now, is that bit finished. So let's take it out of the chuck. Put that to one side and get on with the chuck body. So I've got my... tenon on the end which looks to be far too big oh no that's going to be fine it's a it's a little on the large size really we'll need a little bit of straightening up tidying up which I'll use the roughing gouge just to take that little wobble out of it see I haven't quite cut all the way down still a bit of a wobble it's funny funny wood that's got a lot looser with the sanding so we can correct that though in push it forward rest on the wood lift the handle arc into the top rest on the wood lift the handle and arc into the cut now that should be too big 
which it is. Thank goodness. So let's work on getting that. I could do with a better finish on there actually. I think the multi tool would do that. So speed up, sharper tool, that's left a nicer finish than the parting tool, and still not quite the right size. Good, so let's clean up this face then. Again I'm going to use spindle gouge, cutting across the face. I will be scraping as I did on the lid. Feels, that feels better to me anyway so scraping time so I've got my scraper tool it's going to overhang a fair bit I've still got three times as much off behind the tool rest but I do need to put my tool rest up a little to make sure I'm cutting above center or just cutting on center with a trailing little bit of hand sand so going with the grain now now that won't have been enough but what you may have seen me doing uh, was was rocking the tool having a little curve on there is often good and I went in first of all cutting with this side here because down in the corner there were there were a few wisps of grain cut grain now that is almost about to start fitting so so I'm just cutting by resting the bevel not cutting lifting the handle I've got some stuff that way I'm controlling how much comes off. Very little. It should be leaving a clean surface, which it is. I'm going to check this edge as well. It's clean. Still not quite going on. So get the bevel, lift the handle. I think it should engage at the front now. Yes, just. So that is just going on now. Get the tool rest out of the way. So that's a nice tight fit. It's not going to go any further though because of that slight curve that I've put on there. So I can start 
very gently, removing a little more material in the middle there. That, to me, feels right. Yes, that's a nice firm fit, which but there's nothing to stop you making assurance double sure and getting a bit of masking tape to hold that on for this bit of the shaping. Here we go with some sanding sealer then. Just going to clean that up before the next coat with a very light sand with the grain. With some 800 grit sandpaper. Just going to clean that up before the next coat with a very light sand with the grain. With some 800 grit sandpaper. Get that cleaned off. With a tack cloth. It is worth, if you want a very good finish, to do two coats of the ebonizing lacquer. Too much, too much in the middle there. Far too much in the middle there. Oh well, I'll uh, sand that back and, and sort that out once it's dry. Right, there we are. It's time to go overboard. Kleister medium, copper and uh, a rather messy cat food tray to put the food in. To put the food in, to put the paint. <coughs> oh, excuse me, to put the paint in. I'm gonna use the back of it though, because <laughs> that's cleaner. So don't need a huge amount. There we go, there's the Kleister medium in there. Going to put some copper Probably, probably that's too much, but there we go. Mix that in and remember the Kleister medium helps to make it transparent. That's what I'm counting on. And it's a slap it on and see what happens kind of day. There we go, that's certainly slapping it on, isn't it? Including on the top as well. And in that join. A little bit thick in some places, thicker than I actually wanted it to be. Ultramarine blue. Don't really need as much as I put on. Blow off the dust. There we are. Mix it up. Mix it on. That's really the whole point of this playing around. Just dabbing off what's on the brush. Next colour, aqua.
mix it up. Oh, yuck. Doesn't that look messy? Yeah, I really think not getting the darker blue dry was a mistake. But that's why I do these fun afternoons. See what works and what doesn't. I'm mixing the Kleister medium in. And then wiping it around, moving it around. So you can see it's quite thick there. Move it. It moves very easily, uncovers what's there. Getting very busy, very messy, swirly. Don't neglect that bit of a corner. Don't neglect the top. So the white I'm using is pearl white. So it's got a little bit of uh, mica in it. So it'll have a bit of a sheen. some of the water off the brush right mix it up mm, interesting this does goes on quite differently color is going almost immediately but you can see a shine that it's giving And what I like about this is it's very imprecise. No, no lines not to go over or close brush control needed. OK, let's see if putting some stain on is going to help and work like it did last time. Again, I don't want the stain everywhere. building up a <coughs> sheen <coughs> so that was royal blue now here's blue and that really is working with the colors underneath the brush strokes underneath and reacting with the sheen. Okay, so I put a couple of dabs of white stain on white cloth. Let's uh, get that on and see how it reacts with the other colours. I'm not entirely enamoured of it. Well, I'm I'm getting the feeling that the other colours, maybe the other colours don't really come through. Maybe they do. Maybe they are, were completely complete waste of time putting them on maybe not so let's introduce one more element
So methylated spirits or denatured alcohol. Let's see what this does, if it does anything. Bit of puddling, bit of pooling, which I do like the look of. But really all the, all the acrylic paint seems to have vanished. Comes through a little bit in places. Don't mix it too much with the black, Stuart. Some of you are probably screaming at the monitor now, Rob. Don't, what are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah, you're certainly messing up the top. Oh well, I'll come back and correct that in a moment. That's only three things I've done wrong on this one. So just soften the effect of some of that copper. with royal blue and then blue mm, maybe skip the white because it's showing underneath and just go straight to my methylated spirits Look at that discipline, putting the lid back on straight away. Are you still watching? Golly, you've got some stamina, haven't you? So let's think about this for a moment then. There it is in all its glory. Uh, was it worth putting the three, four colors of paint on? I don't think so. I think probably the only contribution they're making is the copper and there is some texture from the swirls of paint that our shirt that shows through so it makes it a little bit more of a complex pattern makes it look a little uh, more interesting perhaps am I pleased with it mm, yeah mostly what am I not pleased about lines on the top of the lid perhaps a little crude this line round here probably again that I, I went for the safest option really didn't I I've got to decide now whether um, whether to lacquer it in one piece and then I'll have something to clean up or whether I should separate it and do the lacquering separately or at least with the pieces apart. I can't decide. Let's see if I can get the lid off first of all, anyway. My hands are a bit clammy. A bit... Let's uh, protect it with a bit of kitchen roll. There we go. That comes off. So, I mean, I could rest it on there. Oh, no. It's sticking to it. Right, so that's not dry yet. Felt dry. 
It felt dry. Oh no, so it wasn't dry after all. That's the trouble with using a hairdryer. It was dry on the surface, but not beneath it. And I've got a bit of kitchen roll embedded in, the, in it there. I think, oh, I think I got away with it. I want a very, very nice smooth surface for this. And uh, going to wet sand with 2000 grit paper. I think that's fine. And up here is fine by the look of things. Bit of wax paste. And you can see a lovely big shine coming up. It's going to look like a car bonnet. Well, that was a bit round the houses, some of that, but it was worth taking that effort for a box that no longer has a lid any anymore, because I've lost it. Aha, here it is. So we have a nice, lovely little box. I'm very pleased with that. Nice finish, nice lid. I like the recessed line in there more than the rubbish V that was there before. It's a bit dusty actually, but that's a very attractive item. I'm gonna put that on the windowsill. Thanks for watching.